Turn Around Theory is back with two all new back to back episodes and they're all new. You don't say. Oh, I do say. And coming up, we'll watch a video about a man who rejects a woman after she was told that she is not allowed to come to his house without his permission. And I'll give you a theoretical thought like I always do. And only four more episodes left until the season finale. So join me for two all new back to back episodes of Turnaround Steery coming your way next on YouTube. I guarantee you it's going to be a damn good one. A man rejects a woman after she shows up to his house without his permission. Stay tuned for another edition of Turnaround Theory because later on I'll give you guys a free theoretical thought based on today's episode. Fellas, as I often say, y'all should be knowing my saying and y'all should be knowing the drill. Grab a snack and come on back because y'all just might learn something. Roll the intro. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Once again, it's your boy, Mr. Turnaround, a.k.a. Tenacious T. I want to welcome you back to another edition of Turnaround Theory right here on my YouTube channel, where I give you guys a free theoretical thought on uh, just about anything. Hey, listen, if you are new to my channel, I personally want to welcome you. And if you are, in fact, a returning subscriber, welcome back. As a constant daily reminder, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my official YouTube channel, it would help out and it would be beneficial for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to click on that post notification bell because you, my friends, will instantly be notified every single time your boy posts up and upload more additional content onto the channel. Please follow me on all social media sites. There will be links provided in the description box below. Check out full episodes of Turnaround Theory on my official website. There's also going to be a link provided in the description box below. Check out my new debut single off my coming album, for Mississippi for Life Volume 2 entitled Double Dead, there will be a link posted up in the description box below. And if you want to contribute to my YouTube channel through PayPal, there's also a link provided in the description box below for that. And please, please don't forget to use the hashtag Team Turnaround that you see on your screen. It lets me know that not only that you are watching this particular episode of Turnaround Theory, but it just goes to show that you are supporting my channel in terms of the content that I post up. And I might just send you a shout out right back. I hope I covered everything in this matter, but before we get started, y'all know the drill. Here's a quick word from our sponsor. Are you tired of those annoying scam calls and those robo-bully calls that constantly harass you over the phone day in and day out? I know how you feel. That's why I've downloaded the free Hire app. It takes care of all of those scam calls and spam calls that you get on a daily basis, and it can also help identify numbers that you don't know about. And if you want to enhance that, you can also download the premium version of the Hire app. Download the free Hire app on Google Play and on the App Store. Hey, tell them Mr. Turnaround sent you. It's worth a try. Now back to the program. Now on today's episode of Turnaround Theory, we're going to be watching a video about a man who rejects a woman for showing up at his house without his permission. Now, I invite you to stay tuned because at the end of the broadcast on today, I'll give you guys a free theoretical thought based on this particular episode. And before I proceed on with this episode, I must give a shout out to the Charles in Charge podcast for posting up this video a few months ago. I'll have a link posted up in the description box below, if at all possible. But you watch the video and let me know what you think. Was he wrong for doing that or was he right? You be the judge. Watch the video. And I'll be back. I was kicking it with this one guy. In his apartment complex, I'm familiar with the area. So he sends me his address. I come, we kicking it, we having a good old time. A week or two later, another guy hits me up. He wants to kick it and chill. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I don't want, yeah, let's kick it and chill. He sends me his address. So I'm like, hmm, that kind of look familiar. I'm driving, I'm driving. I get there. Turns out he lives in the same community as the guy that I hung out with two weeks prior to. <laughs> street life that's the only thing i know street life you know where this is going it's like a rocky movie you 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 know how it's going to end you big cold-blooded dummy it's different buildings so it's okay like 
everything should be fine. A couple weeks later, the first guy asked me to come through. Again, like, come chill again. So I'm like, all right, bet. I get to the door. I start knocking on the door. We text him. He said, here I come. Still doesn't come. So he texts me. He was like, where are you? I was like, bro, I'm at your door. And he was like, no, you're not. I'm at my door and I don't see you. Bro, next thing you know, the door opens. And it's the second guy. Bro, I should bust you your head right there. I was mortified. He was like, why are you here? And I was like, why are you here? Wow. I had a bottle of wine in my hand. I said, so I said, yeah, it's why am I here? I'm like, he was like, I'm not trying to have no company tonight. I was like, yeah. It's not your day. All right. Cool. Huh? Dating is totally a numbers game, and I've done the math. Look at this comment. All those dates but no boyfriend? Yeah, well, it's a numbers game. Here's the math behind it. I'm going to use January as a jumping off point. In January, I went on dates with 10 different men. And yeah, I know this math is oversimplified, but you get the gist. No, all in all, these were all good dates in their own right. You know, everyone was kind to me. Everyone was cool. There were no horror stories. However, 60%, yes, 60% of those men ghosted me. 20% sent me a rejection message a text and 20% I sent them a rejection text. So if you add the number of men that ghosted me plus the other 20% that rejected me, overall, that's an 80% rejection rate. Yes, I get rejected 80% of the time. Hence, no boyfriend. I just thought that doing this math was really important because insecure men out here in the comments, they seem to think that I just go on dates and women go on dates to just use these people, right? It's not like that at all. Look at how many times I'm getting rejected. And yes, the man took me out to a very nice, expensive date. So what? Get over it. If this bothers you dudes and get out of the dating game or don't date women like me. If you put 10 people in a room and you think that one of them is guaranteed to like be a match for you and be a compatible partner, out of here. If that's what you guys really think, then your standards are not high enough and you're definitely not being selective enough. But as I always say, I will die trying. So I'm going to keep playing this numbers game until I finally win the dating lottery. I feel it coming. A few moments later. My kids don't need their father in their life. What? If the quality of your happiness as a single mother is tested on a constant basis, can you make the decision that the children do not really need him around? You're an idiot! If the way that he treats you is detrimental to your mental and emotional health, do you have to make that decision? I was married to my children's father and I had been with him since I was 12 years old. Because they're losers. After making the decision to divorce my ex-husband, he was very emotionally and mentally abusive to me. Let's ricochet out of here. I used to make the excuse all the time, like, my kids need their father. They need their father. But at what cost? I used to get so angry and I used to go into these deep, dark spaces every time I had to deal with him. By the time my kids came home to be with me, I'm depleted emotionally. It even went so far that I would talk badly about my kid's father in front of them. You're an idiot! And then I had to make the hardest decision that I really did not want to make. After sitting and thinking to myself, this is not what I want for me. If I have to continuously allow myself to be damaged in such a way, how much good am I going to be for my kids? And as a single mom, of course, we're looking around to all the women that are around us, whether they're married or maybe they have children and maybe them and their children's father aren't together. But the co-parenting goes well for them. And I never saw myself being a single mom, literally with their father out of the picture. I never saw this coming. But when I tell you I am the happiest I have ever been with him outside of the picture. Are my kids sad about this sometimes? Absolutely. I'm sure they think about it quite often. But am I my best self with them? Absolutely. They get a better quality of a mother for me because I'm not being abused. I'm happy. My spiritual relationship with God is amazing. There are a lot of mothers and a lot of single mothers out here that sacrifice that sacrifice the quality of their happiness when it comes to their children just to have the children's father around. I refuse to be one of them. Now, I don't know what the future may bring. I don't know what that looks like. Maybe someday we will come to a place where we can get along where I can respect him and he can respect me. And we can co-parent 
like adults and be the best version of ourselves for our children. But until then, it ain't happening. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. For her to even think that it's okay for her to be able to remove the father and not allow her kids to have their father in their life is wild because she didn't mention anything about him being a bad father. Let's get that clear. There was in one statement about his parenting that was expressed throughout this entire clip. We just listened to everything was about the relationship between him and her and how she was going through things and how it was affecting her. And as a result, she felt like she has the right to be able to remove him from their life. That's wild. That's crazy to me as far as things go. And this is why so many times we see men aren't in their children's life. Not all the times because they want to just run off and leave, but because the mother will do everything in her power to keep him away. Because things aren't working out between them. Now he can't see his kids because they have issues and they have conflict. She don't know how to separate that from we still need to do what's best for these kids. And I don't care how you slice it. Kids need their father. What y'all think about the baddies in their late 30s, early 40s, still fighting for a damn chick? Still being like, oh, did you hear what she said on Twitter about you? Yeah, she said that she was going to beat you up. You going to go beat her up? What? Why the? No, I'm not about to go beat her up. I'm about to be like, girl, you want to play chess? Girl, you want to shoot some dice? See if I can win some money off of you? Girl, you want to um, you wanna go shoot some hoops? See if I could win in a game of horse? Because what I look like fighting you? When I got three kids, two kids, one kid who in their teens, they watching me. The hell I look like fighting you for on camera for a check. What I look like. And wh why am I going to be someone's entertainment for getting my head knocked off my goddamn body. Then having to come back and knock someone else's head off their goddamn body. Who's also a mother and who also has children. And I hope our kids don't go in the same school district. Because now we got kids who fighting up at the school on behalf of their mamas. The heck? No, mm -mm. At some point, this bad shit got to stop. I am sick and tired of you baby mamas coming on this Beyonce internet to complain about your bum ass baby daddy. Beyonce. Y'all yeah. knew who y'all laid up with. I don't give a. I understand it takes two to make a baby, but some of y'all be so two screws loose in your heads that I'm not understanding. A man can literally say anything he could promise you the moon and the sun if his actions don't align with his words baby it's time to go and i understand love i get it sometimes you don't want to see the man that you are truly in love with with somebody else but baby i would rather take the trauma with me than the baby with me then y'all come on this internet to complain about how much of a bum he is He's a bum, but you're a bum as well. Mm. You may be a great mother, but you're a bum to sit there and lay with a bum that told you he was a bum. You bastard! Don't go anywhere, because when I come right back, I'll give you guys a theoretical fault to this episode right after this. Stay away from those women who are emotionally unstable. Now listen up, because this is some crucial advice you need to hear. Emotional instability. It's like walking on thin ice. One wrong step and then you go plunging into icy waters. And you know these type of women. One moment they're sweet as pie and the next they're flying off the handle for no apparent reason. They're like a ticking time bomb ready to explode at the slightest issue. And I gotta tell you fellas, being with someone who's emotionally unstable is like riding a roller coaster with no seatbelt. It's an unpredictable experience. It's chaotic and it's exhausting. Because you gotta know this, fellas, a healthy relationship requires stability. It requires trust, communication, and the ability to weather life storms together. But if you're with someone who's constantly on the edge, who can't control their emotions, you're setting yourself up for a world of hurt. So my advice to you is this, if you suspect yourself dealing with a woman who's emotionally unstable, run. Don't walk, run. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, no amount of love or affection is worth sacrificing your mental, and emotional well-being for. And if you are here doing this, you're creating self-inflicted wounds. And if you have kids with this woman, this can potentially put your children in danger. If the plan is to someday, to, you know, have a family. There's a lot of women in the world, so hold out for the woman who is emotionally mature, someone who can handle the ups and downs. And now, turnaround's theoretical thought. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know what time it is. And this is always my favorite part of the segment. It's time for another edition of Turnaround Theoretical Thought with yours truly, because I'm about to give you guys a theoretical thought based on today's episode about the uninvited guest, a.k.a. the man rejecting the woman for showing up at his house without permission. So here's your theoretical thought for the day. Stay the hell away from these type of women that think they want to kick it with you when you know they're always up to no good. These are some of the same women that are act like they're innocent and so sweet and play the victim, but they don't like accountability. If they got children already, don't even bother. It's not even worth the risk trying to go to jail for a crime that you didn't even commit. That's the theoretical thought for today. Hey, listen, I want to thank you for watching another edition of Turnaround Theory exclusively on my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as a daily constant reminder, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my official YouTube channel. It would help out and it would be beneficial for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to click on that post notification bell because you, my friends, will instantly be notified every single time your boy posts up and upload more additional content onto the channel. Stay right where you are because another episode of Turnaround Theory is coming your way right after this.